What's good? It's your boy Fanon. All right, man. I'm gonna do a post-fight reaction to Javante Davis versus Hugo Ruiz. Excellent fight. Uh, for the five seconds it lasted. It was also some pretty good and interesting um fights on undercard as well. But uh before I get into that, I want oh, <laughs> yeah. And a real interesting fight over on uh the zone that I didn't get to watch because I was watch obviously because I was watching the Gervonta Davis, the PBC card on Showtime. Uh, but for the for the if you're not one of the five people that watch that fight on the zone, Alberto Machado got knocked out. Now Tank is the, without a doubt, the champion at 160 pounds, man. Somebody knocked out Alberto Machado for him. Crazy seeing that some cats uh in the media were really trying to push and act as if this Gervonta Davis fight was a scam because he wouldn't fight this. This killer uh, Machado, and then Machado gets stopped. But anyway, let me uh, let me welcome you back to the channel. Thank you guys. If you're if you're a subscriber, thank you so much for subscribing. If you're not subscribed, I hope that you accept my invitation to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can be notified when we release more videos and we do our live streams. We had a real good time last night. Uh, you know, chopping it up real time, watching the fight. Uh, a lot of a lot of good comedy in the live stream, and also a hey, check out the Patreon. I got some stuff that should be. If it's, I'm almost done with this project. It's a little bit more detailed project, so it's taking me a little longer than I thought it would, but it'll be out soon. So uh, check out the Patreon. I'll put a link to that when uh, when I get that done, and it's in the comment section below. But uh, with all that behind it, let's let's get to this fight. Um, uh, Javante Davis, man. Javante Davis is a heck of a fighter. Man, 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 man. I love watching Javante Davis fight. Javante Davis is, man, he is so, he's extremely talented. He's extremely skilled. He's got just, man, his power at 130 pounds is, man, his power is deadly at 130 pounds. He really puts, he really, really, really puts a hurting on cats when he touches them uh, at 135. Because he's knocking out guys with shots that, man, it really don't matter who you are if you get hit with that. The only way that you're going to be able to beat Javante Davis is if you don't let him hit you with that. Um, and I don't know if how easy that is to do because the shot that he hit Ruiz with was such a nice shot, man. The dude had his hands up. He came right around with, with, a, with a right hook, right around the guard, right to the chin, and that cat wanted no more after that. Same thing that happened to Quaylar. I think Quaylar was with a body shot. And then, of course, their Fonseca got knocked out. Before that, it was uh, Liam uh, Liam Walsh that got knocked out real ugly over there in the U.K. And then, of course, there is the Jose, Jose Pedraza beat down. This cat is actually putting hurts on people, man. Now, he's got all this crap going on outside the ring where he's, you know, constantly getting in some little trouble here, a little trouble there. But I'm pretty clear on what the, uh, what the solution is for that. He's just got to stay more busy. Now, I'm going to disagree with some people about what he needs to do next, but I think what I agree with uh, that most people that I hear talking about this is that he's got to stay more bit more busy, man. Yeah, he's got, he's this is 20th fight in 2017. I think in 2018, he fought one time, right? And two, was it 2018? I think he fought one time. No, nah, excuse me. He fought uh, a couple times in 2017, uh, three times in 2017. That was the that was the Bedrazo, Walsh, and uh, Fonseca, and then he only fought one time last year, and he just fought for his first thing, his first fight this year. Hopefully, 2018 will wind up being an anomaly, uh, and he can stay more active. And the guys that I want to see him fight, though, now see, this is where I'm going to disagree with some people. Much respect to y'all. Y'all know who you are. And uh, much respect to you and your channels. But I just, I, a lot of people want to see him fight Lomachenko next. Like, let's go to Lomachenko, Lomachenko, Lomachenko. I am, I'm not so excited to see that because, not excited. I mean, obviously I want to see the fight. I would be very excited to see the fight. But I think that, that Tank Davis needs to go right back into training camp and get ready for a fight with, Either Miguel Burchelt or Tevin Farmer. I would even take I would even take a fight with with Ito. But 
I would really like to see the Miguel Burchell fight. If not the Miguel Burchell fight, then the Tevin Farmer fight. I don't, I, personally, I just think that Javante Davis, Tevin Farmer is a mismatch. I, I'm more intrigued by the matchup of Miguel Burchell, but that gives, them, that gives him multiple fights in a row and then allows him to move up to 135 pounds. The biggest issue, the biggest reason I'm not, a, I'm not in a big rush for him to fight Lomachenko next is because they're not in the same weight class. Now, Javante Davis has having, had missed, he's made weight two times in a row. This time he made weight, looked a little shaky. But I think that that can go away if he goes right back into training camp and doesn't allow himself to blow up really, really big. This fight, he, he made weight. It took him a little while to make weight. It took him an extra half an hour to make weight because he came in a little bit over. They're saying that was a scale issue. You know, I don't know, man, that that, you know, if you had a problem with your scale, man, then that just tells me whoever had the problem with the scale. And I know that's the trainer that, that you know, that blamed it on himself and said that his, his scale wasn't calibrated correctly. I mean, you got to have that scale. You got to have that scale calibrated. Right. And that just is a little bit. Con, that's a, that's a convenient. That's convenient. Right. But at the end of the day, it's, you know, no harm, no foul, because he went in. Used the bathroom, got on the treadmill, whatever he did, and jumped on the scale, and he's 0.2 pounds under the weight, right? So he winds up officially weighing in at 129 point whatever, uh, 0.8. He makes the weight. He goes on, knocks the guy out in devastating fashion. Now we on. Now we on to the next one. I just think that the Lomachenko fight, which a lot of people want to see, I want to see, is it's just a weight class above that. And so until he goes up, once he goes up to that weight class, then I'll say, okay, let's see the Lomachenko fight. Now the Lomachenko, all the conversation with Lomachenko did, had started when Vasil Lomachenko was at 130 pounds and Tank was at 130 pounds. Tank was the IBF champion. Lomachenko was the WBO champion. And that was like, all right, let's make that fight. Obviously you've got, you know, uh, you know, the Matrix, no Moschenko, the guy that everybody thought was the best 130-pounder. Javante Davis, you know, was is shit, man. I, I'm telling you, man, I think this dude is a real heck of a fighter. And so a lot of people are Lomachenko fans, you know, talking smack about how Lomachenko will beat him, all that. But all those conversations are taking place at 130 pounds. They're not, they're not. Now you got a guy that's 135 pounds. Uh, Javante Davis has got to move up to 130, 130 pounds to do that. I want to see, I would like to see in the lightweight division, excuse me, not the lightweight division, in the super feather weight division, I would like to see unification, man. But anyway, man, it, you know, that that's what that's what I see. Um, I don't know what would happen if they fight, if Lomachenko fought Tank right now or Tank fought Lomachenko right now. You know, right now I would probably lean towards Lomachenko but it's a lot less. I mean, I'm leaning towards it a lot less than I was before. I just, before I watched last night and it wasn't the the caliber of the opponent because clearly the guy, number one, he had just fought. I think he had just fought six weeks ago, if I'm correct. Um, and you know, he had fought, you know, a couple weight classes down before. So he wasn't the biggest guy. He wasn't the biggest guy in the world. Um, uh, you know, he, he wasn't a big, yeah, exactly, man. He fought, le- shoot, he fought, I'm looking right now, I just looked it up in box rec. He fought less, he fought a couple of weeks ago, right? So he might not quite have been, <laughs> he might not, he's been fighting pretty honestly. He's extremely active because he's fought in November, then he fought in January, and now he f- fought again in February. You know, he might have been a little, he might have been a little worn out. But, hey, man, that shot to the jaw definitely got him up out of there. He wasn't getting knocked out in the first round type of worn out. But anyway, so I don't really put a lot into the fact that he beat Ruiz other than it just shows the kind of power he has. And I love his skill. I'm not sure about I'm – not, I'm not sure how that Lomachenko fight turns out, though, because clearly this is a different level. The biggest shame in all of this, though, is that uh, Abner Mar has pulled out of the fight. I'm thinking Abner Mars probably would have made it to the – Maybe Abner Mars would have made it to the third round, but I don't think I, I don't think Abner Mars is going to make it much past the third round. But now Devontae Davis doesn't get that name on his resume. This comes out again as another, as a, a, a what the what is this? Maybe the third fight in a row 
that he fought guys that aren't, you know, aren't real. Actually, it's a fourth fight since he beat Jose Pedraza because I don't think Liam, Liam Walsh and Fonseca were both undefeated, but, but, and, uh, Huelar, I think Huelar was a former champion or a former title contender and Hugo Saba is, is, was as well, but, you know, they're not, they're definitely not on the level of, of Gervonta Davis and they're both fighting at smaller weight classes. You know, I think the test again, I think the biggest test for him is going to be, uh, the next step up fight for him that I, I believe the next step up should be, uh, should be, uh, Miguel Burchelt and, or, uh, and then if Miguel Burchelt, Tevin Farmer and Ito. And then if he beats any one of those and then he moves to 135, then, all right, man, let's see the Lomachenko fight, right? But like everybody else, man, I think he should deserve to get, you know, deserve to get an ac- uh, acclimated to the weight. And you know that Floyd Mayweather Jr. and these guys are not really going to push him. Floyd Mayweather Jr. is going to take all that type of stuff into consideration. I mean, this cat, the cat knows boxing. I mean, he might have came out there looking like Bullwinkle with them, <laughs> looking like looking looking like a Canadian mountain with them damn boots on. But dang, that jacket, that that uh, jacket, that bomber jacket was sweet though. Uh, but he knows these things, and that's why I say, you know, just don't look forward to that Lomachenko fight, you know, anytime soon. But one guy again that we definitely don't have to think about Javante Davis fighting is Alberto Machado because Alberto Machado got blipped. Anyway, that's what I that's my take on it, man. I'm probably gonna go live a little later today, chop it up with you guys about this boxing. And with that, I'm out. Peace. <laughs>